um, we wrote the method remove evens, and my code had a couple of bugs, which you all then found and fixed, which is great. Um, so now this code works, which is good. Uh, but I wanted to show you another approach as well. Um, and some of you asked about this too. So there's nothing wrong with this solution, but this is kind of a recurring theme in the class, which is sometimes it's easier to solve a problem if we work backwards instead of forwards. And I think removing elements from an array list falls into that category. So let's implement this, the second version, this remove evens alt, like an alternate version um, that iterates through the list backwards instead. So we need to write a traditional for loop that will start with the last index and decrement it until we get to index zero. So we're gonna have four int i equals list.size minus one, because if we have 10 elements in the list and our size is 10, the valid indices are from zero to nine. We want the loop to keep running as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. And each time through the loop, we'll decrement i by one. When I'm working with an array list, if I don't need to remember the value of an element, if I just need to check it, usually um, I call the get method right inside the if statement. So I'd write a line of code like this. I'd say if list.get i mod two equals zero, then I know it's even. And we can say list.remove i. So this is just as efficient, just as correct as what we wrote yesterday. Um, but I wanted to show you an alternative approach um, because I think this is easier to understand and more likely to be written correctly, like if you're writing your code out by hand, like on an exam or something. So. So yesterday we saw four different methods related to the ArrayList class. There are six on your AP CSA quick reference and we'll, we'll see the other two like we'll at least look at the documentation for the other two in a, in a few minutes. Um, but before we move on to that, there's one other feature related to array lists. Um, I wanted to make sure we wrote an example together. Um, and we're gonna do that in the context of the sum list method. So the sum list method has one parameter, which is a reference to an array list of integers. We're going to iterate through that, sum up all the elements and return that sum. So this is one of our you know, very common array algorithms. The feature I want to highlight, however, is that enhanced for loops work with array lists just like they work with arrays. So that's pretty cool. So we can say enhanced for loops support iterating through array lists. Yay, that'll make our life easier. Um, the syntax is identical to what it was with arrays. So I can create my loop variable. I'm gonna call my loop variable value because I don't wanna confuse it for an index, right? An enhanced for loop, we don't know what the indices are. This loop variable value will be assigned the value of each element in the list. And then after the colon, we put the variable, which refers to the list. So same syntax as we use with um, arrays. And then inside the loop, we can do something like sum plus equals value. That's about it. So same restrictions with, in terms of array lists and arrays when it comes to enhanced for loops. We cannot change the value of the element um, in, the, in the enhanced for loop. Um, and there's some extra restrictions as well that we'll look at in a, in a second here. Um, but if we just need to access the elements and we don't care about the indexes, great. Let's, uh, we can just, we can just do that. Um, actually, let me backtrack a little bit. The restrictions are different. Um, no, well, we'll, we'll 
we'll get to that in a moment. I don't want to get ahead of myself. One thing I wanted to point out, though, here, which might not be clear, is that we have an array list of capital I integers. That means each element in our list is a reference to a capital I integer object. And yet the type of the loop variable is just the primitive int. But this obviously compiles. We could write it like this, and that works as well, but we often write it like this instead. Um, and so there's something else that Java is doing behind the scenes here that I just want to make sure we capture and that you're aware of. Um, and that is Java will automatically unbox. So we talked about auto boxing yesterday, which is taking a primitive value and automatically building a, um, a one of those wrapper class objects around it. Java will automatically go the other way as well. So it will automatically unbox wrapper class objects. Like for example, capital I integer. And assign to variables of primitive types. Like in. So that's why this code works. Um, the, the value of the element is really a reference to a capital I integer object, but Java will automatically be like, oh, look, they want to assign it to a variable of type int, the primitive int. Let's get the value. Let's assign it for them. Let's make all that easy. Oh, really good question. It's um, no, it's more of a language feature. Like it wouldn't work for your class. Yeah. So basically it's just a connection between the primitive type and that one specific capital I integer class. Um, let's scroll back up to the top and actually call this method to make sure it works. So let's actually do system.out.println we will call some list and pass my list as a parameter. Some list returns an integer value, we'll immediately print it. So when we compile and run this, do a little bit of mental math, we can check to see that this actually works. I'll run it too, just to make sure. Yay, looks good. There's one more thing I want to show you that you might run into, and so I want you to be familiar with it in case you do. Um, and this is what I was alluding to earlier when I was kind of like confusing myself there for a moment. Um, about the different restrictions corresponding to enhanced for loops. Um, the additional restrictions is array lists have some features that arrays don't have. We can add and remove elements from an array list, but we cannot do that in the context of an enhanced for loop. Um, if we try to say something like list.add, and let's just, this doesn't make any sense for summing things, but let's just say we try to add the number of seven every time through this loop. When we run this code, we get a concurrent modification exception. Um, and I think it's an odd name. And so I, I wanted to take a moment to explain to you what that means and why we get it. Basically, what the enhanced for loop does behind the scenes um, is efficiently um, keep track of where it is in the array list and, and work its way through the array list. And it can do that efficiently when it can make the assumption that the list isn't going to change. Um, that it can assume that um, the number of elements is gonna stay the same, nothing's gonna be added, nothing's gonna be removed. Um, but if things were added or removed, it wouldn't be able to iterate through the list anymore successfully. And so what the Java runtime does is it basically detects if we violate this rule, and if we do, it generates this concurrent modification exception. So the concurrent part isn't that you're doing two things at once, 
It's that you're doing one thing, adding an element to the list, and concurrently with that, we are in an enhanced for loop, which behind the scenes is also working with that list. That's the concurrent modification part. Um, so if you see that exception, the, the solution is to not use an enhanced for loop. If you need to do something more complicated where you do need the loop and you need to add or remove elements, then you need to use a traditional for loop um, and just be careful as you go. So, yeah. Um, not if it's an enhanced for loop, but if you switch to a traditional for loop, you can do whatever you want because now you're like totally in control. You just have to be careful. Like your index still makes sense as you start moving around stuff. Right. Otherwise you might end up with a bug like we had yesterday. Right. All right. So let's add a little comment about that so that if you do run into it later, you're like, oh yeah, I remember this. So modifying the list, whether that's via add or remove, um, if we do that inside an enhanced for loop, it generates a concurrent modification exception, which is a really long class name. So we're going to comment this out. We're going to leave it in the notes, but we don't want it to run because we don't want the exception. 